Hello everybody. Travis here is with Welcome to Sweet Tooth Donking That a massive delayed reaction, but I think we are recording. I think we are recording properly. If I can upset my opponent already. Are we playing against a two color deck or They put down the the blue color. Are they going to commit to that? So I have my two colors available. All right. I don't have a ton of ways to get food in here, and uh, for some reason. That's our that's our fight. Okay. Unexpected. That wasn't even the combo. But we'll go in and show you the full deck. In the meantime, it looks like I'll probably be starting most of my new videos with a battle still. We have the results of the poll. Let me pull those up for you real quick. Uh, let's see, it was split evenly, 50-50. Like, so you go over the deck first and then do the games, or action first, give us the game, and then explain it. Uh, some people are here either way, and I had a, a place for the haters to vote, and uh, nobody took me up on that, so I thank you for that small mercy. So it looks like the choice is still up to me. So my my general default will probably still be to open up myself, and then go in and explain. And whenever I have to do something more complicated to explain things ahead of time, I will. But in the meantime, this is called Inert Handoff. Uh, if you've been around the channel for a little while, not too long ago, I've been experimenting with different decks using Render Inert. It's come in pretty handy. And Fateful Handoff I've done uh, a couple of different times. It, it was fun to do, go ahead and do Sulkanar the Tainted and give my opponent that on occasion. Uh, what we're doing this time is a bit of an experiment. We've got Archfiend of the Dross. He enters the battlefield with four oil counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, you take away one of those oil counters. Once it has no oil counters on it, you lose the game. So you need to either win fast by flying over their head and hitting it with the Archfiend. Also, whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, its controller loses two life. So that's that's a little added feature that a lot of people don't remember a lot of the time when they're facing the Archfiend. But I only have one copy, and I didn't burn any wild cards. So this is kind of something I do on occasion where I do have the wild cards, but I want to show for newer players if you're new to the game, you got a neat card, you want to use it, but you don't have all the wild cards yet because you're too new. Um, how do you go ahead and still play with cards like this? So this is what I got going on. I got four copies of Royal Treatment so we can give a creature hexproof. So if they try and remove it instantly, I'm going to time things so that I've got one green available to protect it at all times if I can. I've got Tenacious Underdog. A lot of the other creatures that I have are Blitz creatures because of the Faithful Handoff. If I have enough mana that I can pay the Blitz cost, normally they would die, right? Um, so if I also pay this to give the Handoff, then I can get some extra card draw out of it, and they just get a creature that's going to die. So that'll be fun. We've got one armored scrap gorger. Uh, this allows me to add one mana of any color, and when it becomes tapped, I get to exile a target card from a graveyard. So I usually try and make sure I've got at least one graveyard hate card in my deck, just because, uh, especially with Ixalan out, there's a lot more uh, graveyard love, so to speak. One cosmic hunger target creature control deals damage to either another creature, planeswalker, or battle. Uh, two fauna shamans. So if we've got something out like a tenacious underdog. Maybe I can just, uh, well, actually, it would have to be in my hand, right? I'd have to be willing to discard it. But uh, we could uh, throw that away and go get the Archfiend of the Dross if we're ready for it. Not too much for removal, but usually when I'm playing green-black, this is my utility card, Terra Sunder. Really easy to get rid of artifacts and enchantments, and you kick it to get rid of anything else. Four copies of Welcome to Sweet Tooth. This kind of gives me my 1-1 creatures, so I've got more than you might think. For the overview, I only have eight creatures and uh, 24 lands. So 2.8 mana average is about an average mana cost. Uh, but this will give me some food tokens and then we get an extra counter for a food token on uh, any target creature you control. 
Uh, the render inerts are good for removing loyalty uh, counters from planeswalkers. They're good if I want to uh, sort of reboot my enchantment sagas. They're good if I'm facing a bunch of counter opponents, which I've been doing a lot lately. Night Clever is good against 1-1s, one uh, against any swarming. Creatures your opponent's control get minus 1, minus 1 until the end of the turn if it enters the battlefield. Huntsman's Redemption. You create a 3-3 three, three Green Beast creature token. You see to the right, that's also a dex leave we can get. For Chapter 2, you can sacrifice a creature, and then we're going to go look for a creature or basic land card. This is, uh, since I have three copies of this, that sort of equates to having four copies of Archfiend for me, right? If I need it and I don't have it yet, I can sacrifice a creature and go get Archfiend when I'm ready. Uh, then for Chapter 3, up to two target creatures get plus two, plus two, and gain trample until end of the turn. The Fateful Handoff card itself, draw cards equal to the mana value of target artifact or creature control. Opponent gains control of that permanent. So we have two ways to win for this alternate win scenario. If we have Archfiend to the draws, and uh, it's, say, the third turn that we've had it out, it's going to have one oil counter on it. We go ahead and use Fateful Handoff, give it to our opponent, and then uh, at the beginning it removes the final uh, oil counter, and they lose the game. If we're not going to uh, be able to time it properly for removing the counters, but we have both a Render Inert and a Fateful Handoff and enough energy to use them, We'll put Archfiend to the Dross down. They may think that we're just trying to keep it and kill them or whatever. Uh, then we're basically going to give them the cart with Fateful Handoff. And then we do the Render Inert and remove the oil counters from the Archfiend, resulting in an instant win. In the meantime, in case we're missing one of those three parts of the combo that we might need, I've got a copy of Beseech the Mirror so we can search our library for a card, Exile Face Down, and Shuffle. A little bit of land, free, three uh, Invasion of Zendikar, so we can go get two basic land cards apiece. And a couple more Blitz creatures, Girder Goons. When the Girder Goons dies, create a 2-2 Black Rogue creature token. And the Workshop Warchief. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you gain three life. When it dies, you create a 4-4 Green Reiner Warrior creature token you see to the right. And that's mostly it. And let's see if we can get any part of that combo going. The deck does work for the sort of the rest of the deck. I don't need to rely on this necessarily to win. As you saw, if you get out of Sweet Tooth Saga, sometimes people just scoop. Um, if if I had a more concentrated deck composed of food tokens, the the Welcome to Sweet Tooth Enchantment Saga is pretty devastating. Actually, if they're not prepared with enough removal at the beginning. Especially if you can protect something with a royal treatment, you can actually run away with the game with Welcome to Sweet Tooth. It's a, a deceptively powerful card. Let's see, that's two or more lands. I think I just want to put down the Scrap Gorger right away. If they want to. Spend a removal card on 0-3. That's not the worst possible thing that can happen to me. And now we can do that. And not really much else to do at the moment. We're kind of going to wait for them. A Thundering Raiju. That's disgusting. But that doesn't have summoning seconds, right? So we can go ahead and kick this and exile it now. Sweet! Our next removal. Um, I don't have what I need in terms of the black mana, but I could... Okay, so let's wait. Let's wait a turn. I could push it and be very risky, but I've got a chance here to pull off the combo. Let's see if I can get it done. Um, this is fine, I think. What we're going to do is we're going to sacrifice this. We'll get rid of this card so they can sacrifice that to draw a card later. We'll go get our second black mana source. So 
Fucking black mana source. And then I'm gonna pass the turn to my turn. Oh, I don't even need to use Beseech the Mirror. Okay, so I play Archfiend to the Dross. Go ahead and play Takanuma. Pass the turn. Thundering Raiju. We'll go ahead and leave tribute to the World Tree alone. You're not going to attack with that, are you? No. No, you're not. Okay. So now... Okay, let's go ahead and attack first. Would make the most sense, just in case. In case something doesn't go our way. Okay, then we do... Fateful Handoff. Draw four cards. Uh, go ahead and play that. And then we can play Render Inert. Exile that. Lose the three oil counters. At the beginning of their upkeep, they automatically lose the game. Sweet! That first match was too quick where the opponent scooped with the enchantment saga I put down, so... It is so refreshing. It's a good sign for the new year that I'm able to level up and demonstrate the combo so easily in efficiency. It didn't go that well in my playtesting. But yeah, that was, that was pretty perfect for us, so there you go. Now, if I lose three in a row, maybe this is a bad deck, but you saw me win with the cards that I wanted to play, so I'm automatically happy. In some other Fateful Handoff decks that I've built around this card, it gives me two of them at the very beginning, and I had to scale it back from four copies to three. But the fact that I only have one copy of Archfiend of the Draws kind of makes me feel like I need to have everything else that's associated with the combo maxed out. So I'm willing to have this be a dead card in my hand for possibly the entire game because there's there's no reason to suspect that I might get the Archfiend of the Dross. My playtesting though, I drew Archfiend of the Dross, even though I only have one copy of it, I drew it more than the four copies of Faithful Handoff and the four copies of Render Inert combined for all of my matches, which I thought was kind of strange. That's a regular, yeah, it's just a fungus, right? So it's not an artifact or enchantment. I can't get rid of it now. They got a sunken citadel as well. And a way to power up their graveyard. Not good for me. But I think we go ahead and just exile now before this be too much worse. I think that's the right card to get rid of. I think that's the right threat. In the meantime, they're gonna populate their graveyard, so maybe an Ixalan based. Ixalan based theme that's going to be built around building up their graveyard to power up whatever they put on the field. And then, of course, they could always have something that brings something back from the graveyard as well. Okay, and we'll be equal in our land distribution for colors. I've got mostly green, but. If I get the Beseech spell, that takes three blacks, so I needed to make sure I have th at least three black sources. Having three royal treatments, though, is not the greatest thing. Already using Hidden Acropolis. I 
Okay, not a whole lot of choices here to do, right? Only one card I can legally play. Although we can't save it with the Royal Treatment if they decide to do removal. They've got seven cards. They probably do have at least one form of removal. Enchanted Creature gets minus two, minus two. Um, I'm going to let that one go. sacrifice the creature. We will go get Archfiend of the Dross. We will play Archfiend of the Dross. We can block all the flyers now. Life is good. Six of the eight for their fungus. Uh, nope. Now what are you going to do? Uh, up to two is fine. Let's see, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's tough to think that I could go ahead and attack right now. Ah, that actually helps me. Then it's Vigilance and Haste. Let's go ahead and swing in. I've got Trample, so I don't want to chump lock. So technically, if I can get one more hit in with Archfiend, I can win. This has Ward 1 now because of the Royal Treatment. It's got the Royal Token. Uh, let's see. So we let that resolve. We've got to pay the Ward cost. And then we go ahead and put on the Royal Treatment. Hexproof again. And they don't even try. They don't even try. Oh, I want to see those three cards that were left in their hand. Oh, we're going to pay horribly for this. We can't win three times in a row. It's against the rules. We must be punished. I don't. Do I have another copy of this yet? When you cast adventure. Oh yes, I do. Okay. I haven't made a deck around it yet. I do have lots of ideas for the new year. So if you're new, go ahead and like and subscribe. I've got a lot of playlists. So if you want to invite somebody who, you know, maybe not hooked on watching Magic gameplay yet can give them a gameplay of something that they like. Maybe their favorite color, or their favorite uh, guild. Or if you'll find a favorite card. Or favorite format. At this point, I've been doing this for two and a half years where I've been putting videos on the net, so... There should be a playlist for everything at this point. And we're just... I'm going to curate the, the YouTube channel so that... Everything hopefully is appropriately labeled each time. So that it's easy for y'all to find what you want to see specifically. But I have some ideas about doing some other stuff too. Some point counterpoint videos where I'll start discussing more uh, philosophical things like uh, things involving the color pie. But instead of just having to talk the whole time, I'll still make a deck and play at the same time. So you'll still get gameplay while I rant about my philosophical ideas. We'll pass on that. Get a food token. And I think it's okay to play the Redemption now and just get a 3-3. They might have removal, but... We can't just sit here and do nothing. 
they play the royal treatment now. Unexpected. But it's modified so that it can put out the Dracosaur. Okay, so I can sacrifice a creature. Let's... Which one am I doing first? I'm doing the token first, right? Plus one counter? Okay. And then we'll sacrifice this one. We'll go ahead and go get our Archfiend now. It's revealed so they see it. And hopefully this isn't another royal treatment, because I want to get rid of the dinosaur. Or the dragon, sorry. I, I was right on both counts. This is the dinosaur and the dragon. Okay, then we just keep this little puppy as a defender. And they have another one. That's a legendary. That's the Atora. It could actually sacrifice creatures, right? Deal damage to any target, and they get three treasure tokens. Are you willing to get... No, they're not willing to get rid of a creature. We buff up our one creature. And let's go ahead and attack. See if they're willing to trade anything. They're going to take that damage. Sweet. I'm going to exile the demon dragon instead of the dinosaur dragon. And we can protect our token creature with the royal treatment still if we need to. So now all I need is a fateful sorcery. This is going to hurt. Ten points of damage. Oh, hello! That's kind of nice. We're set. If we survive the next turn, we are golden. The, I kind of wish these at least one of these two was an, an instant and not a sorcery, but they flooded out with land, so to speak. It's not a terrible flood. We've got about the same amount of land. Three, four, five, six. Four, seven. I need another land. I can't really do this the way I want to. Um, I've got another render inert though, so yes, we're sure. Resolve that. Auto pay cost. Remove their oil counters. Draw a card. Another fate plant. Not what I wanted. We'll just pass the turn. Give me a land. We exiled the other dragons, so we don't have to worry about Reva's bringing stuff out of the graveyard like we normally would. Um, okay, three, four, still not enough. But, we could put this out as a blocker. And then I fly over their head. Do they want to bum rush me now? They could do five points of damage. They do not. Okay, that's tapped. I only have one oil counter left. I can't wait. That was absolutely wrong. <laughs> okay, so... Um... We attack with that now. They block. Um, that's six overhead. I can sacrifice this now. I kind of don't have a choice. I'm going to automatically lose. Oh, no, wait. It's fine. It's fine because there's... Thurs is the one they... I forgot. They actually lose it. I don't need to cast Render and Earth. I kept, I was so focused on trying to do both of these at once, I forgot. You lose one counter each turn, so that was perfect timing for me. I didn't even need to attack. Sometimes you get, you get so excited about the combo, I want to do both of those spells. 
Enough time had gone by that it was the perfect timing. I didn't need the next spell. That's four in a row we won. Magic loves me in the new year. Happy new year, everybody. Huzzah. Wouldn't that be great if Magic, if Wizards of the Coast made some announcement and they said, like, we're turning off the governator that determines your matchups on Magic and we're just letting it all be random for a change. And we're not artificially trying to uh, find the rock, paper, scissors formula to defeat you. We're just actually going to spend an entire day for the new year and let you play. And whatever you come up against is whatever you come up against. Wouldn't that be great? Okay, they get to see our deck. They'll probably take the Terra Sunder. What do you think they're going to make of our deck? They take the Beseech card. I did not expect that. Does that mean they have more discard spells coming up? Yes, they do. Alright, we lose the Royal Treatment. Discard can really mess us up. I need three in case I ever get the Beseech spell back, so three black sources are there. Uh, I kind of need them to stop with the discard. If this is discard tribal, they could take away all of my resources. Alright. We exile the bat. That gives us the search spell back. Liliana? Is the problem? Happy to don't overthink things. Liliana gets exiled. Although, I oh, do like the, that's my the cue to leave. On that one. Um, I guess we just have to play that. Seriously? An on curve shielded? Alright. That's three of my four removal spells. And we're near dead. <laughs> okay, so they're going to take Beseech the Mirror. So I can't go search for the draws like I wanted to. Might not matter. They they might have had their removal spells. Um, I guess we just hold on to that. In case they're wondering. In case they want to play another discard. Yeah, there you go. They take the spell they wanted to take anyway, right? Okay, so what can we do here? We can... Oh, there's the Archfiend. Well, I guess we have to play it in case they have discard instead of removal. Oh, they just have removal. That was easy. Yeah, okay. Well, we won four in a row, so... Magic did not turn off their machine. They gave me the render inert. It's gonna do me absolutely no good. And a render inert. Hey, we can remove uh, counters and draw a card. Let's draw another card. Hey, look, we have the combo. If only our other uh, creature wasn't in the graveyard. Yeah, that was uh, that was a creature. They get rid of another paper handoff. Nearly dead. Get a land. They're doing everything with just four lands. That's all they need. Ooh, I can place a. I can put a card down. Happy day. What can they make with this? A 5-4 with Menace? Violence is necessary. And I got playing. You will Thank you, Arena. Well. Yes, way to show that there was absolutely zero hope. No way of doing anything at all. Flood me out with eight lands to their four. And they have nothing more than four. Completely fair about 
Well, at least I won four before I lost one. That's a little bit less than the mandatory 50% win-loss ratio, right? Yeah, in case I didn't mention it at the beginning, discard hurts us. Especially when there's uh, almost nothing but discard. And notice they, they only had the one removal spell, but they had... That one removal spell was all they needed. It was exactly what they needed, and they had it exactly when they needed to have it. So that we'd have zero chance. Okay, but aside from that, um, there are other disadvantages to this deck, right? It's, it's kind of a janky deck, but um, I just wanted to demonstrate there's a way you can use cards like Beseech the Mirror, Huntsman's Redemption. So if you only have one key card, you still have ways to get it so it can seem like, you know, okay, is that one copy or does these act as force multipliers? And you can almost count that as five copies. You either draw it or you've got four other chances to go get it. So it's not quite as, as hopeless as you might think. If you get one good card and you're new to the game and you don't have a ton of wild cards or you're, you're like me and you're very stingy with using your wild cards at the moment, you still have ways within the, within the arrangement of the game to go ahead and draw the resources that you want. So just think of that. We also had a way that we could have... We had two other ways because we could have discarded a different creature card and went and got the Archfiend with the Fauna Shaman on the battlefield if we had it. So... Yeah, in a couple of different... We made sure we had a couple of different ways to win this so we could just do the Fateful Handoff when they had one counter left or do the Fateful Handoff with the Render Inert and then we could remove... Uh, if it had more than one counter, we could remove all those old counters in one shot. There's there's a way if you have room for a bigger deck, like if you're playing... Um, I don't know. There's uh, Some people are playing 250 card decks right now. Well, you could... There are some other cards, but you'd probably have to fit in a third color where you can... Uh, cast spells with flash. You can turn these sorceries into flash cards and you can play them as instants. So that would require a much more bulky deck. You probably have to start stacking a ton of removal in to survive long enough to pull that kind of thing off. Uh, so it probably end up probably with at least 100 cards in your deck. Uh, but there are ways to turn these from sorceries and use them uh, by giving them flash as if they were instants. And that way you could get a, a quicker response and maybe get all this done on one turn. Uh, but you'd have to survive longer. So I just wanted to make a nice tight 60 card deck and show you could have some fun with the alternate win scenario for that. So we're kicking off the new year with this alternate win scenario card and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Remember to like and subscribe and uh, always leave, leave a comment if you like and we'll have something new for you next time. Again, Happy New Year everybody. I'm excited to get into things. I probably won't uh, do five a week just because I was kind of killing myself since I have a full-time day job. I can't keep going to bed past midnight. So um, I might cut back on the number until I catch up and get a number of videos produced in the can. And then I might ramp up uh, the release of them as I sort of build a stockpile. Um, but uh, I might go a little bit slower for the new year. So hang with me and uh, spread the news to a friend if you found a channel that you like and want to tell them about it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.